Hey everyone, so back for another video. Today we're going to be jumping into a series of new tips for InDesign. If we jump straight in for the first tip, it's going to be setting up your workspace. So you can see here, opened up InDesign and the workspace is pretty average. There's nothing really open and there's kind of no tools on the page. So what you want to do is change the workspace, go straight up to Window, Workspace and click Advanced. This has the most options open. Now it's still a little bit closed up so what we're going to do is start opening out some of the more important tools and the ones I like to use are layers so I just click that and pop it out, drag it out and then lock it to the left of this bar so you can see it open. Now I actually like to have the pages window below the layers open up as well so you can have both of them. I'll drag that up a little bit. Uh, I like to have swatches open as well so I'll pop that out and pop that at the top. Now some of the other functionality that I like is actually hidden in the window bar. So go back to window, go down to object and layout and align. Now this one's really good for arranging objects and it's also got some pathfinder tools. So I'll drop that one at the bottom underneath pages and that's pretty much it. I'll just go back to window and go to properties because I like that one too. And all of these windows here, you can actually just pop out and delete. I don't often use those. And there we go. So now you've got heaps more options and everything's all open up and ready to go. So the second tip is something that you'll often have to do, which is create a set of images or objects in a grid. Now what you could normally do is drag out frames and then copy them out and make your grid. Uh, that's just gonna take ages. So there's a quicker way. What you can do is just select the frame tool uh, drag the frame to roughly the size you want and then if you push the arrow keys while still having the mouse held down you can add rows and columns. If you'd like to change the spacing in between the frames what you can do is hold down control and use the arrow keys to either widen or thin up those boundaries and then when you're done just release and now you can go ahead and pop images into those just push control D which is the shortcut for place and then just select all of the images you want to place in and then you can just go through and click onto the frames which will place them in. Now this brings us to our next tip which is changing the display qualities. Now as you can see here these are all a bit pixelated and you can't really tell what they are. So right click anywhere, go to display performance and tick high quality display and that'll just put them at their maximum resolution. So you can switch back and forward through those to make sure you get either a better performance in the program or a higher quality preview. And now for the next tip is looking at a print preview or getting rid of all of the grids and guides around here which is going to be around all of your text boxes what you can do is simply click shift w and that will bring you into a full screen print preview and get rid of all of the graphic elements that aren't going to be printed and that's really handy just for quickly previewing your design now here's a quick little bonus tip and this is working with images inside frames and setting the fitting and fill options. What you can do is click on the image frame and then push Control alt shift c fill frame proportionally and if you want to push Control alt shift e that will fit content to frame so that will fit it based on the smallest dimension. Now you can see the difference between those here. Now you can quickly just go around and do that to get your images set up roughly in the frames how you want and adjust them later. So the next tip is related to spelling and spell checking. So sometimes you might be sitting there wishing that InDesign had those colored spell check underlines in red and green just like Microsoft Word. Well the thing is you can turn that on. All you need to do is go to edit, spelling and dynamic spelling and as you can see that's picked up all the spelling mistakes and that's really good so that you can look at your layouts and see quickly that there's errors. Otherwise, if you want to do the spell check, just push Control I and that will run through your whole document and complete the spell check. And then you've got your forward, backwards and options here and set your dictionary down the bottom. Make sure you do that before you send your work, otherwise you're in big trouble. So for this tip, we're going to be looking at text and paragraph styles. So when you're quickly doing a mock-up of your layouts, you might want to add some text in a text box. Uh, which will let you see what the page looks like before you've done any of your text and you can fill in these with some generic text by right clicking and filling with placeholder text and that's really helpful when you're looking at your layout and you want to know what it's going to look like with your text added without having to decide on the content beforehand. 
Now, when you're working with text in InDesign, it's always good to work with paragraph styles, which is where you save your pre-formatted text. So you'd go in like this paragraph here and you've done all of your formatting, set the font and kerning and all of those things. And you'd like to save that and apply it in different locations, which means you can edit all of the text with that same paragraph style at once. And it's a really efficient way of working. So the way to set a paragraph style is to open the paragraph style window. So you can go window style paragraph style or push F11, uh, select the text frame that you would like to base a new style on, click create new style, double click on it to edit your features and give it a name. So you might just call this main body text, push OK. And then the way you apply that to other text boxes is select them and then click on the main body style that you would like to apply and now that formatting has been applied there. Now the benefit of this is you can quickly make edits to all of the text with that body style so if you wanted to go in here and change the font size you could quickly just edit that body and what that would do is affect all of the text with that text style added to it so you can see that's happening there and it's a really good way of working with text okay that's it for today's video thanks everyone for watching and feel free to pop a comment down below of anything that you'd like to see me cover in a future video and i'll get straight to it thanks for watching and see you in the next one